the purpose of this video is to introduce to you some of the pipettes that we're going to be using for our aseptic pipetting portion of the lab uh, this week. The first type of pipettes are going to be stored inside of a sterile container like this one. Um, this particular one has not been sterilized, but I'll show you how uh, to take the pipettes out once it has been. Uh, we have a lid here and the easiest way is to take the lid and take it off and then shake the pipettes out so that they come out a little bit past the edge and we're able to grab the tip of the pipette we can put the lid back on and put the tube back and then um, i will show you uh, what parts we have on this particular pipette Normally, if this was a sterile pipette, I would not be touching anywhere near the end here, but because I'm just showing you the, the parts here and explaining uh, how to do the measurements that will be able to handle it normally. On this particular pipette, you can read from the label here that it is a 10 milliliter pipette and that it is the volumes are accurately measured to one tenth of a milliliter. And then we'll notice something on here near the top of the, the pipette there is an etched band. Sometimes these can be colored bands as well and there could be more than one of them. The etched band here is an indicator that this particular pipette is what is called a serological pipette or otherwise known as a blowout pipette because in order to get the accurate volume we're blowing out all of the liquid all the way out of the pipette. You will also notice right here at the top there is a piece of cotton that is used to protect um, the pipetting device, whichever one we're using, to uh, prevent any uh, liquid or bacteria from going up into the pipetting device itself. So this again is uh, because of the etched, and we look at the markings on here, we can see this is a serological or a blowout pipette. And look at the increments here, go from zero milliliters all the way to 10 milliliters at the very end. Let's compare this to uh, a, another type of pipette that we'll take out. And this pipette is also a 10 milliliter pipette and it's accurate to one tenth of a milliliter. Uh, notice there's no etchings and no colored bands here at the top. This one also doesn't have a cotton plug. Uh, Sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. Uh, you'll notice here that it goes from zero to 10 milliliters there. So this is what is called a measuring or drain out pipette instead. Because we are getting the volume from zero to 10 milliliters here. We are not ejecting liquid all the way out past the end in order to get the desired volume. So I'll show you how to practice with each of these. Uh, again, you can notice the increments going from 0 to 10 here. Let me put this back in momentarily. Let's go back to our blowout pipette, and I'm going to show you how we are going to attach it to the pipetting device. So this right here is a, an example of a pipetting device, and it's got the end where we put the, the pipette in here. This is a draining lever. Um, I usually recommend students don't use this for a couple of reasons, but I'll, I'll explain that more when we actually transfer some volumes here. And then this is the plunger that moves up and down to be able to suck liquid in and then push liquid back out. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be shoving the end of the pipette carefully into the pipetting device and give a little twist just to make sure you've got a nice secure uh, seal on here. If you get leaking with your pipette, then you need to go back and check your seal again. When we're working with uh, blowout pipettes, in order to blow out the very end of this to get rid of the, the last little bit of liquid, what I recommend is we actually start with a plunger a little ab above uh, the bottom here so that when we actually get to the part where we're blowing things out at the end, we have a little bit of pressure that we can push to push that last drop or two uh, out. So I'll show you how to actually uh, transfer some liquids and talk about something very important later called a meniscus uh, in a separate video. So these two things right here 
are uh, micropipettes. These two micropipettes are actually from different manufacturers, but they have the same uh, functional range here, 100 to 1,000 microliters. Now, you may recall from our unit conversions that 1,000 microliters is equivalent to one milliliter. So this one right here in the window is set to 1,000 microliters or one milliliter. This one here is set to 575 microliters or a little bit more than half of a, of a milliliter. The way that you uh, adjust the values here in the window is to twist the plunger. So we can twist the plunger to decrease the volume. We can twist the plunger to increase the volume. One of the things you want to be really careful with, though, is to not decrease the volume below the stated minimum or above the stated maximum because you will damage the pipette. So just be very careful to make sure you are not um, trying to set the pipette outside its minimum or maximum range. So let's set this one back to 575. And in order to suck up liquid that is exactly 575 microliters with this pipette, we actually have to use these disposable tips. So you'll notice with this disposable tip box that it's been sterilized. You can see that from the, the uh, tape that is color changed here. And we want to be really careful to keep these uh, uncontaminated as much as possible. So when we are going to get a tip, uh, a fresh tip to be able to use for transferring volumes, we're going to set it where we have. We're going to hold the pipette in your dominant hand and um, hang it on your fingers in access with your thumb here. And what you're going to be doing is pressing the plunger with your thumb. And you've got a nice secure hold on this. You'll notice on the plunger that the plunger actually has two stops. So we can go down one stop. And then if I press a little bit harder, I can press down to a second stop. We'll do that again. If we get pressed down to the first stop and then the second stop, um, I'll tell you why that's important here in just a moment. Uh, because we're going to go down to the first stop to be able to withdraw our liquid and then we're going to go down to the first stop and the second stop to eject our liquid. So when you're getting a tip here, you would uh, lift the lid, you would press the pipette down onto one of the disposable tips and put the lid right back on. We do not want this lid to come off, to stay off of here because you'll be exposing it to bacteria. And then as long as I don't touch this tip to anything, this tip will remain sterile. Uh, so we can move the box out of the way. Let's practice here for just a second. I'll show you um, how this works with the disinfectant beaker. Is If I was wanting to suck up 575 microliters of liquid, I would press the plunger down to the first stop. I would stick it into the liquid and then release the plunger slowly. And that is 575 microliters of liquid right there. So let's say we're now going to transfer this liquid back to someplace else. We would press down the plunger of the first stop and then the second stop several times to get rid of the last little drop of liquid that's in there. When we're all finished, we're going to want to get rid of our tip. And to get rid of our tip, we don't grab the tip because that would be problematic, but we're going to use this ejector button right here. 